What's up, Fire Fam, and welcome back to Destiny 2. My name is Kara on Fire, and today I am bringing you a update video. There has been some really interesting updates coming to Destiny 2, and I thought I'd love to get into doing the sort of videos every week if I can, when the updates release and more interesting things come in the game, so I can inform my community. Also, if you would like to join a clan, we do have a clan you can join in the description down below. You're also welcome to join the Discord which has ARC servers, community, they're all lovely people. Um, you're very, very welcome to join us. So let's get into the video. Now, before we start, I have a big announcement. If you do not already have Destiny 2, then I highly recommend pick it up now. This is because they have a free pass for you guys now for the main game from now to November 18th. So you can get the whole game for free for free <laughs> which is really nice which means it will be cheaper for you to get the dlc it will be nice and don't forget to use re the um go for a friend thing that will get you some nice prizes for yourself if you use that referral link i will leave one in the description down below you can use if you'd like to use that you are very welcome to, to claim this all you need to do is go on battle.net go on to the destiny 2 tab and then where you would usually play the game press on the button it will say claim and you can claim your own copy of the game for free that doesn't include the dlcs but it does include the main game which cuts a lot of the price off for you also just for this weekend bungie are giving players an opportunity to try out gambit it's a really lovely game mode to play it's a lot of fun and it will give you a nice taster of how it is and stuff but it is worth picking up the pass remember don't um don't base everything on the base game forsaken adds a ton to f to destiny 2 so make sure you pick up your uh, forsaken package as well hopefully there'll be a um a discount or something hopefully fingers crossed for you guys <laughs> this week zer is on nessus you can find him if you go to the watcher's grave fast flashpoint he is literally sitting up on a tree as you see here go into him here this week he is selling vigilance wing starfire protocol frost ee5 and ornamentarium now before you do anything with the um fated engram make sure you buy what you like from those four options and then get the engram because then you have a bigger chance of getting something different because you can get the actual item uh you could get and like say another vigilance wing if you bought the uh fated engram and then went for a vigilance wing whereas you could have got something different if you bought the vigilance wing first so make sure you get the items you like and then get the engram that will give you a bigger chance of getting a different exotic now that that's out of the way i can tell you about the patch that came in a couple of days ago on october 30th this is patch 2.0.5 where they've done a bunch of fixes they fixed the uh, wish ender malfeasance there's been a bunch of trace rifle edits um swords been buffed uh sleeper has actually lost a lot of ammo capacity in gambit matches now so it'll be less useful it has also lost its aim assist unless you're playing with a controller so i'm just gonna go over the patch notes and tell you what's more like most interesting about them to me what i think about them and then if you would like to compare and tell me anything you can comment in the comment section down below let me know how you felt about this patch and the weekend that's going on so they finally increased the base damage of the wish ender now from what i've heard it still doesn't one shot things it's like a two shot thing unless you're really really good with them headshots then you know it's a lovely lovely uh, bow to get you can get it through the throne room down below but there are guides for that and stuff i will do one at some point her points and perks are now more effective, uh, you can, they're more readable and consistent. Um, there was an issue with the broadhead perk where it would not activate properly, which would lessen a lot, a lot of loss of damage. And I'm really glad that they fixed that, because it is a wonderful bow. And it is quite tough to get. Now they've done a bunch of changes um, in Crucible this time. Like, your trace rifles will now spawn with 50 ammo. And several other game changes, like breakthrough mode, 
Uh, the, it's been decreased with the attack uh, respawn timer from 7 to 5 seconds after the breaker is deployed. Modified the game rules to prevent teams from forcing the round into a stalemate. In the initial fight over the breaker, the team with the most capture progress, high watermark, will win the breaker if time runs out without any breaker progress present. There will still be overtime if time runs out with progress present, and the breaker will go to the team with the current progress at the end of 30 seconds, or to the high watermark if progress reaches zero with no players on the breaker. While a team is hacking into the other's vault, progress decay accelerates gradually during sudden death for up to 30 seconds. After that, which the round will end with a moment no attackers are present in the capture zone. If the round ends in a draw twice, the match ends in a tie. Either team will get glory points from this scenario. Win streaks are maintained. Now we go over to Gambit. Like I was saying earlier with the sleeper stimulant, it now gets, gains less ammo from the crates on the wall. It used to be 4, now it is 2, which is quite a significant drop. But yeah, you're going to have less sleeper and gambit now. I've already noticed there is a lot less I'm finding. Swords now gain more ammo from heavy ammo crates on the wall. Now 12 up from 6. That is double the ammo. So maybe you'll get more use out of a sword now. I don't see it being useful within like killing other invaders, which is what you should use the heavy ammo for. But we'll see. Fixed an issue where sometimes one team's invasion portal would not open fixed an issue where sometimes the wrong team would be credited for defeating the Ascendant Prime Evil. That was a frustrating bug. <laughs> Increase the spawn rate of the Ascendant Prime Evil Servitor. The Gambit, Ship and Sparrow are no longer guaranteed drops, which is fine, they're not that bad to get. Quitter Protection. Fixed an issue where matchmaking would sometimes result in a player being kicked from Gambit matches, thus triggering quitter penalties. Quitter penalties have been re-enabled. Yay! Although, I feel with this, still, I don't think their quitter, quitter protection or penalties are strong enough. Um, just being suspended for like 30 minutes, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> you get a ton of people that leave in the Crucible and Gambit, I feel like there should be more of a cost for leaving. I feel like it's quite unfair on the team. A lot of the time you can salvage the match, I've had it several times I've salvaged a match when it looks like all things are going, you know, tits up. And yeah, people just leave and that when people leave, you have more of a significant chance of failing because you don't have a full team. I also noticed with our balancing, uh, it needs a bit of work. Um, I've been put into crucible matches against all these low levels and now I just have a team of level 50 players. They're going to get smited. <laughs> <laughs> as much fun as that is for me, I feel awful for them because, you know, it should be an equal matchmaking. Um, it shouldn't be like that because that's really unfair on like the lower players. Or at least there should be like some lower players sprinkled in with the higher players, but like equal on each team. I don't know how they would work it, but I feel like some more balancing maybe needs to happen on Crucible for that sort of thing. Because poor little players. <laughs> They get absolutely smited. And I know it's scaled, but they, you're forgetting they have no experience. Like, most of them have bare minimum experience. So I think they need a little bit of a, you know, help me up. Also, they don't have the weapons that, like, top of the top would have. <laughs> They're not going to have weapons that level 50 players have. They're going to have bog standard sort of things. So... I would love to see some balancing. I don't know about you. Would you like to see some balancing in these in these game modes some more? Because I would love to. <laughs> with strikes, they fish fixed an issue where with the corrupted scenario, you could get, enter with like a six-player fire team. Now that was fun. I'm really sad they got rid of that. I know it's an issue, but I feel like sometimes we need to have more game modes than just um, Gambit and Crucible where we can have six players in the team or raids. I know you can have some in raids, but it would be nice if we had more game modes or campaign-y sort of things. Maybe just like a special strike that is extra harder than Nightfall that we could have more players. 
I think that would be really nice because I often or not I have like four people in my team and I can't take them because you have to have a three people match and that limits us um, to other game modes like we have to play Crucible or Gambit or something we can't play a strike together um, things like that and that kind of sucks so I'd like to see something like that that would be lovely in the future Enhancement Cores! Renamed Masterwork Cores to Enhancement Cores! How do you feel about the name? <laughs> I'm not sure it makes... well, I guess it makes sense. I'm going to enhance the crap out of myself now. Um, enhancement Cores are now awarded by Scrapper Bounties and the six Spider Weekly Bounties. Which is really lovely, I love it, because they've increased the amount of cores you can get in the uh, rotation and in bounties, I found it quite... Uh, you couldn't get as many cores as I wanted to to upgrade my gear. Of course, cores are always going to be a struggle, but... It's nice how they've made these scrapper bounties a lot more useful than they were, because I found I didn't really do them much last time. They would just sit in my inventory and rot. So I really like how they've added that as a feature. Also, with exotics, they've made a bunch of changes on it this week including removing some out of the loot pool which means if you already have them you won't get them again like ace of spades and uh, wish ender world line zero 1000 voices malfeasant lord of wolves and the chaperone so you'll have to get them the usual way you'd get them like ace of spades you'd have to do the quest for them they won't be in the loot pool anymore which means you won't get two ace of spades which is absolutely useless to you when receiving duplicate exotics, the player is more likely to earn an armor piece as these have randomly rolled perks. This is really nice because now um, if you have like a crap roll on something exotic, there you go. Um, you can have a different perk and hopefully it will be better than the last one. Exotics that the player does not own yet are individually weighted much higher than duplicate exotics. Which is another lovely buff they've put in. When the player receives an exotic, we now then take into account all the exotics the player has found and weigh them against the exotics they have yet to acquire. This lowers the player's chances of receiving exotics they already own. Which again, sweet. Um, I would love to get more exotics, so this is great. Uh, this is great for new players, everybody that's coming into the mix now. You get to experience this lovely uh, change here. I don't know if it will change it too much, but either or, I think exotics needed a bit of work and they've done that and Bungie has provided some nice uh, quality of life changes. Banshee44 now accepts up to 25 gunsmith materials at a time. Oh, that's such a nice change. <laughs> Before you had to spam in so many gunsmith materials at a time, you just had to keep spamming that button. Now he works like normal vendors would and it's so much better than he was before. Uh, we also have a similar sort of thing with a shader dismantle time down from 1 second to 0 0.25 seconds which means you don't have to sit there for ages dismantling like 100 shaders with uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. I know you can speak to the guy but you know it's a pain in the bum isn't it? <laughs> also they have increased the stack size of ghost fragments from 10 to 20. This is lovely because this means you can do more with the spider uh, you can get more instead of being limited. 20 is a nice change, because you're always going to need it for that top tier bounty he has. So you can stock up a few weeks, you don't always have to grind the spider out. So that's quite nice. But no, that is pretty much it. I have left the patch notes in the description below, any helpful information. Also a website you can check every week to find where Xur is. Uh, it will all be there, also the Discord if you'd like to join. Also, I now have a Patreon, so if you'd like to support me in another way, there is that. That will be down below as well. But thank you for watching. I love you, and I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>